So thank you. Thank you, Manos and Manos, for this great, great, great Congress that its reputation it becomes larger and larger all over the world. So congratulations for the hard work. And let's go what you are going to do if it's something repairable, what is repairable, and what do we plan to do to our patients. So we have a 50 years old patient. It's a two-week trauma. And this is the MRI. Or let's go to another case that is 60 years old patient with rheumatoid arthritis, no trauma, no pain, but also the same MRI. And let's go on to a 74 years old patient, right shoulder, no trauma, increased pain, increasing pain, and no force. And he has also the same MRI. So let's begin, and I probably would like, well, what are we going to do to our patients? And are we going to do the same thing to all the three patients that they have probably the same MRI? Probably we should start with clinical examination. To test the supraspinatus, let's go to the basis, to the infraspinatus, to the teres minor, and to the subscap that we have three different tests also for the, for the subscap, the belly press, the beer hack test and the, and the lift off test. And also don't forget to inspect your patient to see if there is atrophy, if it's any infection, to see signs of a previous operation. And the patient history, it's an art. There is a trauma or no trauma. There is pain or no pain. Which is the, there is an ability of making external rotation. Is there a massive tear or there is a stiffness? So also our patient is pseudoparalytic or it has pseudoparesis, but because we're going to do different things to, to, to this patient. So like, like this one that probably has a massive, massive rotator cuff tear after a trauma. So is this repairable or not? Are we going to keep there and let's go to the imaging? So we have three same MRIs. And what we learn from the MRI, the first thing that we can see is the retraction. And we have the cl several classifications. We have the pathway classification to see how retracted is the tendon. And the location of the, of the, of, of the tear is anteriorly, it's posteriorly, it's, it's superior. The, the classification of Philip Collin is a great, great classification. And also all the, the classification that we're knowing, it's a small, it's a medium, it's a large, or it's a massive rotator cuff tear. So I have to, to if we see an MRI, everybody says the same thing. And uh, they have made a very good, uh, very good study from the, from the Zakos uh, uh, group. And they say they, they, pro they proposed one classification system. And they say that if we want to check the location, the extension, and the retraction of the tendon, everybody agreed with this. But with the fat infiltration, no. So we have a massive rotator cuff tear that is for over se five centimeters, that it has two tendons torn, it, it is retracted beyond the top of, uh, of, um, of, the, of the human head. Is this irreparable or not? Another thing that we have to take account, don't forget to make x-rays sometimes to the patient because from the first time you will find that something is not repairable. If you see an x-ray that is like at the left side, at the right side, probably this is a not repairable rotator cuff tear. But the most important thing for me is not the retraction. It's, it's important the clinical examination, but the most important thing is the fat infiltration. So this is where we have to focus. We have the classification for Goutalie, and don't forget that it's a classification based on the CT scan. And this is also a, 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 a modification using the, using the MRI. However, if I give to you a CT scan or an MRI and tell me the Goutalie classification, everybody is going to say the same thing? Probably not. There is not, not reproducibility of these two classifications regarding if it's a fat infiltration of two, or three. We're going to change our plan if it's repairable or not. But we don't agree if it's two or three between us if we see the same MRI. The ultrasound, 
probably it's a good tool, but if we have excessive fat infiltration, it's only for the infraspinatus. So for me, the most, the most uh, useful tool during my daily practice is the, tans is the tangent sign. It's really, to f it's really easy to find it, and it's really, really easy to reproduce it. So this is what also they found, that it is really, really reliable between the examiners, and it's a very good prognostic factor uh, for, for, uh, for a rotator cuff retear. So this is a very good study that is made from, the, from Professor Milano, the, the, uh, the, the, uh, the, keep, the, um, the team, and they found that it's a really, really reproducible uh, to, to assess the fat infiltration of the muscles. And the fat infiltration, all the studies say that it is the most, most important factor for a rotator cuff retear after the operation or for a bad functional outcomes after the, the operation. And the most important is not the fat infiltration of the supraspinatus, but from the infraspinatus. So look, look to the fat infiltration of the infraspinatus because before you choose an, uh, a type of the operation for your patient. And this is also what we found in, a, in, a, in our experimental study. We also operate some rats and we found that the infraspinatus is the most important factor even in the rats, not only in the humans. And it's, it's a 3D also fat infiltrated, and the same thing happens also to the humans. Also, you, when you see an MRI, don't forget, we have four muscles in our rotator cuff, and the, and the, and the, and the, and the fourth is the teres minor. So when you see an MRI and you see that the teres minor is hypertrophied, probably this is something that is chronic, and probably this is something that is not repairable. So let's see a patient, 54 years old, no trauma, two years of symptoms, overhead activity. See, this is the, the I think that the fat infiltration of the infraspinatus is one or two, but the supraspinatus is, is three. And this is, this is the, the, the MRI. So probably this patient is not repairable, the supraspinatus. Is, but the infra and the, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the subscap is something that's repairable and we can give to the patient a quality of life. And the next speakers will talk about it. So we have many, many things to repair something or to augment something. So we end up with a partial repair and with a biceps augmentation. However, if we have a patient like this that we have fat infiltration of the infraspinatus that is it's, it's three or four, but we have a teres minor that is, this starts to be uh, hypertrophied, probably this patient is, ca is candidate for a, for, a, for a tendon transfer. And you choose what tendon transfer you want to, to, to make. But also we have a young patient, non-trauma, excessive pain. He's not good. His MRI is like all the other MRIs. And we have fat infiltration mainly of our supraspinatus. The infra and the, and the subscap are good. But you see it's static, and it's static superiorly. Is this repairable? What are we going to do to this patient? So we have to, to think about several, several things that we, go, that we can do. So this is an extreme case, for example, in order to, in order to lower a head, I had a very good subscap. So what we have done? We have done a tria in order to lower the head using the coracoid. And then we made, so we lower the, cor the, we lower the head with, by this way, and then we augment our rotator cuff and we make a partial repair using our biceps. The next speakers will, will talk about it. It's not, it's not for, for the technique, only to give you some, some messages. So this is the post-op X-ray that we see that we overloaded the head, but this is what happened six months post-operatively. <clears throat> and this is the clinical examination of the patient. So for me, if it's something repairable, it's, it, is, it is repairable. You can do anatomic joint preservation techniques. So if you have a fat infiltration of the subscap two or lower, you can repair directly the calf, or you can augment the calf with something different, or you can do superior capsular reconstruction, or you can do whatever you want, but you can preserve your joint. 
So if you have a fat infiltration that is, becomes to be three, and it's a very young patient, so the tendon transfers come in our, in our pocket, and you have probably to know to make a tendon transfer, it depends from the torn rotator cuff. But if you have fat infiltration that's excessive, and we have osteophytes and it's static superiorly, and the age of the patient is, is, is start to be an, an old patient, so you have the, the RSA in your pocket. Right now, we have to think about it, and the tangent sign for me is the most, the most important sign, and we have the sword and we have the power to give solution to all kinds of the patients, but we have to take the history, to examine it, to see the MRI carefully, and to, to decide what to do to our patients. So thank you for your attention.